serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world. This is the Show Me Sports Network. The following is an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and is a high-fidelity, all-digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyrighted by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. It's time for Jefferson City Renegades Baseball on the Show Me Sports Network. This is the Jefferson City Renegades pregame show on the exclusive home for Renegades Baseball. The Show Me Sports Network will recap last game's highlights, set the stage for first pitch, and even get the thoughts of the head coach during the pregame show. All while we get set to bring you the exciting play-by-play action of your Jefferson City Renegades. The best pregame coverage in the Mink League is on the air as Blake Gazaway and Grayson Smith are ready in the broadcast booth. Exclusive pregame coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball is brought to you by Centurion Cares, Batteries Plus Bulbs, Avon with Michelle Carty, Storm Pro Contractors, Mossy Oak Properties, Law Office of Russ Swanigan, River Oak Christian Academy, Kathy Rush Remax Realty, Eddie Gaydell Society, Joe Mockins Ford, Riley Automotive, Southwest Dental, Canterbury Hill Winery, The Dugout Sports Cars, Edward Jones, Central Bank, Farmers Insurance, Animal Medical Center, Downtown Chiropractic Clinic, Jefferson Bank, BE Renewed LLC, Ponchero, State Tech College of Missouri, MFA, Hitachi ABB Power Grid, and Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball on the Renegades Radio Network. Now, here's the voice of the Show Me Sports Network and the Jefferson City Renegades Radio Network, Blake Gazaway. A very pleasant good evening, everyone. Blake Gasaway here with you, joined by Grayson Smith as we are just a few moments away from getting our non-league contest underway as the uh, Jefferson City Renegades take on the Jeff City Legends here in a non-league contest tonight as uh, both teams getting a chance to play tonight and have some fun and, most importantly, play some baseball. Yes, sir, you're absolutely right. I'm Excited to watch these two teams play. Last time they played, they, it was a high-scoring game. If I remember right, it was like 13 to 12 or 12 to 11. And I just love to see some high offense. I like to see some good pitching, also. But I'm just glad to be back, and I'm happy to watch some Renegades baseball. Yeah, it was uh, it was a, a 12 to 11 score when they played, and they had uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Played things since it's a non-league game. Had a chance to to play some things out of order and. And uh, we'll see them bat more than nine players as they pretty much bat their entire roster. So taking a look at the starting lineups for your Jefferson City Renegades. Again, we'll work on getting the legends. A few of those not sure exactly who uh, who they are, but we'll figure it out as we go. So leading off will be shortstop Drew Mize. Batting second will be third baseman Joseph Keelholz. He was the Meek League Player of the Week last week. Well-deserved honor for him. Batting third will be right fielder Andrew Patton. Batting fourth will be first baseman Carter Mize. Batting fifth will be center fielder and Brady Voss. And Alyssa, everybody can hear you whining and crying on the broadcast tonight. So Alyssa did not have a nap today. And uh, everybody can hear her fit that she's throwing. So batting sixth will be left fielder Caden Deal. Batting seventh, playing second base will be Ben Burton. Designated hitter, batting eighth will be Hamilton Anderson. Catching, batting ninth will be Ale Claro. And on the mound will be Xander Lovin to make the start for this evening. As we said, non-league game tonight. We're going to have some fun. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. That first matchup did go in favor of the Renegades, as we said, 12 to 11. But it was a lot of fun. And uh, we had some matchups that we don't get to see very often. Had some brothers playing against brothers. And uh, it just was a lot of fun. I think we even had the Renegades' third base coach. I don't think he's playing tonight, but he did play for the Legends last time out. Uh, Tyler Brock, I think I'm saying that name right. But he 
played for the or the Legends last time, but he will not be playing tonight, as far as we know. Yeah, he also uh, he had an at bat where he lost grip of the bat and chucked it into the <laughs> and towards the dugout, and you know it just was kind of funny. I was talking to him afterwards about that, just a chance to. Uh, you know, we laughed at it, and he said that uh, it's a good reminder to tell your players to make sure they have a little extra pine tar on the bat before they um, before they uh, get out there and bat. But it was a fun game tonight. It'll be a fun game as well. So we're going to have performing the national anthem, so we're going to pause and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Biblical Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in Jefferson City, Riverwell Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverwell Christian Academy, call them at 573 634 3983. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Oh, uh-huh. wow. I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We <laughs> love, oh, we it. love it. <laughs> but we're thinking about Tokyo. Uh-huh. I know a guy. You know an agent too. It's Kathy Rush at Remax Jefferson City. Call her today at 573 761 3405. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carti. Live beautifully with Avon. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions for forward-thinking businesses. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, predictive dialer, outbound call notifications, cloud services, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. Your customers will have access to information they need quickly and accurately. Most importantly, this allows customers to interact with your business on their terms at times that are convenient for them. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421-5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com. Centurion Cares, innovative communication solutions. Well, we're just about ready to get our game underway here as we said this non-league contest. And tonight with the play-by-play is Grayson Smith. Good evening, everybody. Happy to have everyone listening. I'm glad to be back. It's been a while. We have on the mound tonight for the Renegades, Xander Lovin, as he throws the first pitch right by uh, the second baseman, Cameron Morris. As he starts out this game with a strike. Next pitch is strike two. I'm making an 0-2 count. Next pitch is outside for ball one. If I remember right, I've I've seen Xander Levin pitch before, and I've always loved his fastball. And I'm happy to see it go tonight as that next pitch is fouled off to the back, just to the left of me and... Blake. So I'll be a 1-2 count still on Cameron Morris, the second baseman for the Legends. 
as Blake said earlier, the Legends are going to be batting just about everyone on their roster tonight as they have 11 in their starting lineup. Next pitch, fastball is outside for ball two. I would say more specific details about these Legends players, but I got to say they don't even have numbers on their backs, so kind of, kind of struggling. I don't know much about them, but I'm learning just as you are as he swings and misses on that curveball. That's going to be strike three, and that's out number one for the Renegades. Next up is catcher Isaiah Pani. He is wearing a different shirt than some of the other players. He's wearing a black shirt as compared to the other yellow shirts. First pitch from Lovin is a nice breaking ball for strike one. It is just about five minutes past seven o'clock. We hope you're enjoying what you're hearing. So we have a long night of baseball ahead of us in this non-league contest. Next pitch to... Pawnee will be strike two. As Lovin has been showing off his fastball early already. So Pawnee steps back in, wiggles his bat, loads up. Next pitch is breaking ball away for ball one. She said Lovin on the mound. He is from Columbia, Missouri, right-handed thrower, six foot, 185-pounder, sophomore at Northwest Missouri State. The one-two pitch, ooh, hits him and looked to be the arm or the side. So Pawnee gets hit by the pitch, and he's going to make it down to first base. <laughs> and here comes right fielder Gage Bax, batting third for the Legends. He is also wearing a completely different shirt. He's wearing his Fatima Comet shirt. Think that's where he went to school? I would assume so. It'd be a bit weird if he didn't go there. First pitch of him is outside for ball one. Well, I see district champs on the back, so looks like he was pretty good on that team. His back steps back in. Back, back steps back in. A little bit of tongue twister. Next pitch is outside for ball two. And Lovin comes in, pitching in eight games, has three starts, 1-1 one, one record, 4.32 ERA, and 16 and two-thirds innings works, 11 strikeouts, 10 walks, giving up 16 hits. Breaking ball down in the dirt for ball three. As the catcher for tonight for the Renegades, Al Crow, picks up that ball and throws it back. The normal catcher, Hamilton Anderson, is batting eighth and is a DH for tonight's game. As that next pitch is strike one, making a 3-1 count on backs. So a 3-1 pitch, one out, runner on first, is for strike two looking. That was a good-looking pitch right there. Yeah, it was. It got him fooled. Couldn't pull the trigger on that. So Levin goes from 3-0 to 3-2. He's got the full count pitch. Runner on first and Pawnee, the catcher. Next pitch is a swing and a miss. High fastball for strike three. So two outs. Both of them strikeouts for Levin. And here comes the number four hitter, Ryan Paschel. He's center fielder for tonight. He is wearing a black shirt. Unlike the batter on deck. Who was wearing a yellow shirt? So legends are varied tonight. As first pitch is swung on and fouled straight back for strike one. Legends have a lot of new players on their team from the last time the Renegades faced them. So far, throughout the first four hitters, Cameron Morris is the only person that's faced the Renegades before. As Levin's going to try and pick off at first base, Mize makes a great dig. Yeah, we've seen Mize have several of those at first base where he's had to really go down and dig it out of the dirt. Does so, no problem. See, so 0-1 pitch on Paschal. Next pitch up is in the dirt, blocked by Claro. That'll be ball one. Claro does a good good job of blocking that ball. That, that could have been away, and that could have gone runner to second base. So one on, one ball, one strike. Next pitch up is swing and a miss for strike two. 
And there is that fastball I've talked highly about so far. Paschal has a 1-2 count. Lovin throws. And that's going to be strike three. So Lovin strikes out the side to begin the ball game. Only gives up a hit by pitch. As Renegades look to add some runs in their bottom half for the first inning. You listen to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Swinigan and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Swanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you've earned. The law offices of Russ Swanigan. There are things in life you should always do. Always say please and thank you. Always get a good night's rest and always take care of your teeth. After all, you're only given one set of permanent teeth to last you a lifetime. Southwest Dental Care is always the place to go for the highest quality dental care. They offer comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry services for all patients of all ages. Their experienced and compassionate team is there to help you achieve lifelong oral health and a stunning smile. To find out more about Southwest Dental Care, call them at 573 573- 634-4909 or visit southwestdentalcarejc.com to get the best smile in town you mustache to southwest but he had six strikeouts none of those runs were earned so he still has an era of 0.00 he was uh drafted in the 2008 draft by the la angels played for them got assigned to their minor league team for a while and Nice team to be a part of. Angels having a couple superstars on there, if you've heard. So leading off the ball game for the Renegades will be shortstop number nine, Drew Mize. So he takes strike one, looking. And it must be a, been a, be a while since I've watched the game. This is my first time watching Drew Mize play. I've heard good things about him so far, as he's the brother of first baseman Carter Mize. So he's going to swing and miss for strike two. So he's down 0-2 so far. Voss, the pitcher, is very tall. As next pitch is swung on a miss for strike three. And that's how we start the ball game. One, two, three. Like I was saying, Jacob Voss, he is probably the tallest guy I've seen playing baseball tonight. He is very tall indeed. He's got the pitcher's... Pitcher's repertoire so far as third baseman number 14, Joseph Kuhls, steps in. He's going to take ball one outside. And if you heard Blake earlier, he earned Mink League Player of the Week as he is swinging a very, very hot bat. I was keeping track of stats today, and I look up and I just see Kuhls as he swings and misses for strike one. Kuhls is... He has a slash line of 337, 439, and 500, which is average on base percentage and slugging. And he has a 939 on base plus slugging, which is pretty fantastic. Next pitch is a breaking ball outside, pops out of the catcher's glove. He also had a couple home runs. He went yard in both games and really added to his RBI total. So 2-1 pitch to Joseph Kuhls is a nice breaking ball for strike two. Kuhls has played in 25 games. He has 29 hits. And he is leading the Renegades in extra base hits with 10. So 2-2 pitch. He's going to swing out in front of it and it's going to foul to the Legends dugout. So he stays alive. Still has 2 2 count, one out in the inning. On deck, we have right fielder Andrew Patton, who is also swinging a hot bat. So, next pitch from Voss is swung on and missed, strike three. 
He gets both guys out on a couple of good high fastballs. The good thing about uh, this matchup, too, this non-league game, is we said it's just for fun, but they see a pitcher who, who was drafted to the majors and has still has the uh, heat there that he can bring in the, you said, pitching selection. You are indeed right. As number 33, Andrew Patton, steps in. Batting three tonight as he swings and misses at the first pitch. First strike, one. Patton has played in 22 games. He has 25 hits, eight extra base hits. And he has a slash line of 313, 375, and 538 for a 913 on base plus slugging. So he's going to foul that pitch off in on the hands. I probably hurt him. Yeah, that thing had some English on it. Those trickles. pitches on the hands never, never feel good. Yeah, it trickles over towards the dugout. So he's down 0-2 quickly. He's looking to stay alive. Next pitch from Voss is underway. It's going to be spiked in the dirt for ball one. Yeah, Voss is, as you said, one of the tallest pitchers. I know the Griffins had a player I think is taller than him that they saw this year, but uh, he's a MLB caliber pitcher that these players don't see a lot of. Gives them good experience. Next pitch is a line shot in the right field for a base hit. Just got past the second baseman. As Patton just slaps that ball in the right field. The yeah, opposite field hit there for Patton. So batting four is first baseman, number 18, Carter Mize. And he has been swinging pretty hot bat all year. As... He has a slash line of 303, 387, and 479 with an 866 on base plus slugging. He has played in 33 games, which is the most on the team. So, one on for Mize as he swings hard and nails a and very takes, far foul ball. Takes that one to the opposite field as well. That's really what we're seeing tonight for. The Renegades is they're taking balls opposite ways. Yeah, a good piece of hitting. That's what you like to see. It looks like I lied earlier. Keelholz is not the leader in extra base hits. It's Carter Mize. He's leading by one with 11. So he's batting left-handed, throws left-handed. Next pitch, he swings and... It's a foul ball right behind us. I think I parked far enough away tonight that it won't hit me. It lands just on the other side of the fence here at historic Ernie Vivian Field in Jefferson City. Sun is slowly going down tonight. It was pretty hot when we got here. Hoping it goes down soon. Have a cool night of baseball. Get those Tuesday night lights going on. So Mize is down 0-2. Seen that a lot so far in the first inning against Voss. So he's going to step off. Wipe the sweat off his face. He's probably hot too, just like the rest of us. So one out, one on. Two strikes, two outs. Mize looking to protect here. Next pitch is another foul ball. Straight behind us. On deck, we have Mr. HBP and Brady Voss. It's kind of slowed down with getting hit this season, but did have one the other night. Yeah, just saw that. I was, knew he was leading with 12 and just saw 13. How surprising was that? Mize is still down 0-2. Next pitch delivered to him is a breaking ball. Swung on a miss. Catcher dropped the ball and applies a tag. So both pitchers having eerily similar innings as they both strike out three, but let a runner on base. So headed to the top of the second inning, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Attention class of 2021. It's time to think about your future. It's time for you to take action. It's time to apply to State Tech. But you better hurry because space is filling up fast. In fact, more than 85% of our seats will be filled by March. 
So don't delay and find out firsthand why State Tech is ranked the best college in the country for the second year in a row. And we are proud to be known as the employer's choice. Apply today at statetechmo.edu. Biblical Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in Jefferson City, Riverwell Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverwell Christian Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Work to try to make sure our, our lineup here is short up. So batting fifth for the Jeff City Legends is Kevin Hagner. He is not playing a position tonight. Blake and I are wondering, he looked at the lineup card. He is an EH. So if anyone knows what EH stands for, please be sure to tell us because we have no idea so far. Yeah, they're, they're running four designated hitters or, or four EHs, however you want to term it this game. But again, it's non-league, so they're going to bat everybody on the roster. Nothing wrong with that. They can do what they want. See, he's going to swing and foul that one off. It'll be a 1-1 one -one count against Xander Lovin. You know, it's a great thing about the sport of baseball is you get out and you have fun. And games like this, a non-league game, you can come out and just enjoy it. You are absolutely right. 1-1 pitch to Hagner is going to be slapped to the second baseman, Ben Burton. He's going to pick it up, throw it, and that's going to be the out the card demise. Well, it's a humid night, too. You hear the ball really getting a good slap on it. Yeah, Hagner didn't exactly get any launch angle, launch angle on that ball. He kind of just slapped it onto the ground. So easy 4-3 put out for Ben Burton. Next up will be Travis Kay, the first baseman. First pitch to him is grounded right back to Love, and he's going to drop it and then pick it right up, throw to Mize, and two pitches, two outs. Nice job of Lovin to recover on that. Couldn't quite close the grasp on it. Yeah, he stayed with it and made the play. That's all that really matters, isn't it? Absolutely. Had plenty of time to reset and go after it. So batting seventh is Bryce K. Assuming these guys must... Must be related. They are brothers. So we got brothers batting next to I each think, other. I think they're brothers, I should say. <laughs> well, they have the same last name. That's all we can say. I know that they both went to the same high school and played for the same team. Couldn't tell you what high school it was, but. It's okay. The shortstop for tonight's game. He's ahead in the count 2-0 and now 3-0. On deck, we have Derek Shackles, the E-H. We have D-H and E-H. Still don't know what E-H is, as he's going to take a four-pitch walk. And that will bring up the E-H, Derek Shackles. Shackles played in the last game against the Renegades, and he went three for four with two doubles. So we're looking to see if he's going to bring that hot bat back here tonight, as he's batting right-handed. Lovin has two outs on two ground outs. He's hoping he can get a similar inning just like he did last time. Strand a runner and go back to hitting. As first pitch is going to be, I think it was a ball, but runner's going to make it down to second base. Yeah, it was upstairs. Kate took off pretty much right on the delivery. He has some speed there now at second base. Yeah, he, got, he had a good jump, made it down to second base. Claro just could not get it in time. It was a little bit of high throw. So 1-0 pitch on Shikles is away for ball two. Do have some other Mink League games going on that will pass along as the night progresses. Most importantly, keeping an eye there at the game in Sedalia as the Joplin Outlaws playing at Sedalia against the Bombers. Bombers lead one to nothing right now. That is who we need to win for the second place in the division. Next pitch is away for ball three. As Lovin's slowly losing his command right now. We look at the Mink League, the division starting to 
come down to the wire here. And for the North Division, well, it's not really been much of a competition wow. as between first place and fourth place, it's an 18-game spread from Corenda to Des Moines. However, in the South Division, Sedalia's out front. They're uh, sitting with 18 and 15. And then uh, the Griffins sit at second, but their season done. And it's between the Renegades and Joplin Outlaws, both sitting at 15 and 18 on the season. So we really need some help from Sedalia. Runners headed to third base, and that pitch is going to be fouled off to the right. That's going to be strike one. At this point, there's really probably not much chance for the... Renegades to catch the Bombers of Sedalia. However, we do play Joplin at the end of the week for two games. Sedalia can beat the Outlaws, help us out, and we help out our own cause. We'd have a chance to play a home playoff game. 3-1 pitch is swung on a miss for strike two. So there's full full count against Scheichels. And if you didn't hear before, the Nevada Griffins had their season end the other day. They had a COVID-19 outbreak. Runner's going to hit the third base, but it's going to be swung on and missed. So Griffin's season is over. Makes it a tight race in the South Division. So Lovin gets out of the inning. Leaves runner up stranded on second base. On just a walk. So no hits, no runs. Renegades look to make something happen in the bottom of the second inning as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Uh -huh. I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We <laughs> love, oh, we it. love it. <laughs> but we're thinking about Tokyo. Uh -huh. I know a guy. You know an agent, too. It's Kathy Rush at REMAX Jefferson City. Call her today at 573-761-3405. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products, as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carti. Live beautifully with Avon. Park is, it'll be another non-league comp, uh, another non-league competition as it'll be the Kansas City Monarchs come to town. That's used to be. The Kansas City T-Bone squad, before they were rebranded to the Monarchs this last season. They might have actually rebranded last year, but I think this is the first year of actually playing baseball under that moniker. So they will make the uh, trek here, and uh, should be a great game. I'm looking forward to that. So here we have center fielder Brady Voss batting fifth for the Justin Renegades. So he's going to go up against one of his coaches. First pitch to Voss is a great breaking ball for strike one. Imhoff pitched in the last game against the Renegades. He pitched three innings, gave up five runs and, and four earned runs on three hits, seven walks, and four strikeouts. Next pitch to Voss is swung on a foul ball and make an 0-2 count. So he has an official ERA of 12, which is not typically something you like to see, but he has a small sample size, so he can't really... Blame him much. So 0 2 pitch on Voss is going to be strike three as the umpire run, rings him up. So, so far, the legends are just kind of ringing down the Renegades. So there's four strikeouts through one and one thirds innings. We're in number 12. He is going to go up against Imhoff. One out. First pitch, he. Nails it to the left field for a foul ball. So Deal, he's played in 30 games so far. He has 29 hits, three extra base hits. And he's batting 269 with a 386 on base and 296 slugging. Next pitch to him is outside for ball one. 
So that would mean he has a 682 on base plus slugging. 1-1 one, one pitch on, <laughs> on the way, and Imhoff kind of goes completely sidearm there, and he completely spiked it. Yeah, it looked like he couldn't decide which delivery he was going to go with, so he went with uh, both. He was trying to shake things up, try to fool deal. As 2-1 pitch on the way is going to be outside of the corner for strike two. So an even count in two and two on Caden Deal, the left fielder. Batting left, throwing right. Next pitch to him is swung on. It's popped up in the air right to the shortstop. And I'll be out number two. So Renegades finally put the ball in play, but goes straight to the shortstop for a small little pop-up. Here we have second baseman, number 20, Ben Burton, batting seventh. So he has two outs in the... Bottom of the second of bottom of the second inning. First pitch to Burton is outside for ball one. I'm Hoss one oh pitch to Burton is gonna be downstairs for ball two. So Burton's now ahead of the count. On deck, we have number 11, designated hitter for tonight, Hamilton Anderson. 2 0 pitch to Burton is going to be taken for strike one. So Burton steps back in. Next pitch to him is going to be taken for strike two. Burton really keeps those hands close to his head. Yes, he does. When he has the bat up there, he'll choke up just a hair here, but he keeps him real close to that right ear. Yeah, he wiggles his bat a little bit, gets ready for the 2-2 pitch, is taken inside for ball three. Yeah, he does keep him close. He also does a good job turning those hips to try to get more momentum and keep the uh, bat back as long as possible so he can get as much momentum going forward. Full count pitch on the Bren Burton is going to be taken outside for ball four. So Burton will be the first base runner for the Renegades tonight. Or excuse me, second base runner. I forgot there was a hit by Patton. So here we have designated hitter Hamilton Anderson. He is batting eighth tonight. Head coach Mike D'Amelia trying to switch things up. So Anderson usually bats right around two, three, or four, but he's batting eight tonight. So he steps in on the left side. First pitch to him is going to be a breaking ball outside for ball one. So Anderson batting with two outs, runner on first base. After the walk to Burton, Imhoff is going to lightly throw it back to first base. He was definitely careful not to throw it down the first base line. Yeah, just making sure Burton was awake. Kind of a wake-up call there. 1-0 pitch to Hamilton Anderson. Downstairs for ball two. On deck, we have the catcher, Allie Claro. Allie Claro. So 2-0 pitch to Anderson. Quick pitch, taken outside for ball three. So... Pitchers on both sides are looking eerily similar. You see a walk to Burton. You saw a walk in the last inning given up by Lovin. And then you're seeing them lose command, making a 3-0 pitch right here. Next pitch will be taken for a strike. One pitch to Anderson is going to be fouled and straight up in the air, right behind our heads. I think it took forever to come down. I had no idea where that ball went. As Anderson steps up, full count pitch, two outs, 
Bottom of the second with one runner on. I'm Haas pitch. Be swung on a miss, strike three. As Burton was running on that pitch, but Anderson strikes out. So no runs scored, no damage done. As we head to the top of the third inning. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Swinnigan and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Swanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you've earned. The law offices of Russ Swanigan. We head to the top of the third inning as we still have number 26, Xander Lovin, pitching on the mound. As we head to the bottom of the Legends lineup. It should be number nine hitter, Parker Schneiders, or Schneiders, third baseman for the Legends. And I was correct, Parker Schneiders, according to the PA announcer. So first pitch to Schneiders will be strike one. Great big, great breaking ball. A lot of tongue twisters tonight, I cannot say. A one pitch to Schneiders is slapped to the right field line, but that's going to be foul ball. That was a monster foul ball. Yeah, he hit that ball hard. Sun is finally setting behind the trees. Making it a little bit cooler here at the ballpark. Here at historic Ernie Vivian Field. Next pitch is taken upstairs for ball one. One-two pitch is going to be swung on and bounce to Ben Burton. He's going to pick it up, throw to first. Stretch by Mize, and it's going to be out number one. It was a 4-3 put out. Nice, easy 4-3 put outs. Nothing special. So now we have the number 10 hitter. We're, yeah, we're, played, we're playing by uh, the uh, both division rules. <laughs> playing by the... By the American League and the National League rules. So number 10 hitter, Joshua Imhoff, the pitcher, or who is pitching right now. He is listed as an EH, though. So he takes first two pitches for balls. That'll be a 2-0 count. Yeah, you don't normally get to see the pitcher bat around, but usually it's reserved for those emergency situations. Maybe that's what that stands for, emergency hitter. Could, maybe. Next pitch is swung on a miss, strike one. I'm off taking a big hack on that one. So he has a 2-1 count. Next pitch by Lovin is down. Breaking ball in the dirt for ball three. So I'm off his head in the count. On deck we have another EH in Hunter Backs. So we have two Ks and two Backses on the team. Next pitch is taken for ball four. Fastball that got way up. Upstairs, that was kind of by his face. So this is actually Blake McFeeders. Oh, 
Oh, false alarm, everyone. There is not a Hunter Bax batting 11th. It'll be Blake McFeeters. One of the more interesting last names I've heard so far. First pitch is fastball painted outside for strike one. So I need to write that down on my paper. Did make sense. I had a hole out in left field. Wasn't sure who was playing there. But now we know. That pitch does miss for ball one. He was a count one ball, one strike. Appreciate you for doing that. So one's across the board. One ball, one strike, one out. Next pitch to McFeeders is slapped. Foul ball straight back. Big crowd has made their way out for this Tuesday evening. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, I've kind of lost track of the days so far. Every day is the same. One two pitch to McFeeders is grounded foul ball. Right by my face. I should have stuck my hand up. Makes you wonder the tensile strength of this net. Well, I'm hoping it's strong. <laughs> I'm relying on that. At least I'm glad we moved over from the first game of the season because we're not quite in the line of fire like we were then when we were right behind home plate. Yeah, plus we can see. Levin tries to pick off runner at first. Still had a good view in either spot, but anytime there was a pitch that was fouled straight back or a pitch that went past the catcher, it was right in our face. We were ducking for our lives. 1-2 pitch to McFeeders is taking strike three. You can ring a backwards K next to his name. That is out number two. Hey, what's your name, Thank <laughs> you. Well, I don't know who this is. No one knows who. Chris Nukensteider. I'm going to let Blake say his name because he's going to ground the ball to shortstop. Or not kill holes. He's going to flip the second base for out number three. Kill holes is batting or is third base. That'd be Drew Mize who fielded that ball. So we had a surprise name. Ground out to end the inning. No runs were scored. Only one runner on base. So we head to the bottom of the third inning. Still a 0 0 ball game. Unlike the last game they played, where it was a 12 11 win. But well, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions for forward-thinking businesses. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, predictive dialer, outbound call notifications, cloud services, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. Your customers will have access to information they need quickly and accurately. Most importantly, this allows customers to interact with your business on their terms at times that are convenient for them. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421-5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com. Centurion Cares, innovative communication solutions. Back to the bottom of the third inning. We have number nine hitter, Ali Claro, catcher for tonight's ball game. He's going to lead off the inning. In life you should always do. Sorry, I was too busy eating my popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. She's going to take the first pitch for ball one. I'm Hoff, it's still pitching for the legend, so he's going to rip that ball way. Foul. And he turned on that ball. Yeah. 
Looking up Claro's stats, he's played in 17 games. He has eight hits, two extra base hits. Value 163, but he has a really high on base percentage in 357. He's going to take ball two, make it a 2 1 count. So he knows how to get on base. Next pitch to him is swung on for strike two. Fouled straight back. So we have Q holes run and go get that ball. Keels might need some new batting gloves. As, uh, see his hand falling through it a little bit. Maybe that's his secret. <laughs> Maybe it is. It's working out for him. Next pitch to Claro is ground ball to shortstop. He's going to field it. He's going to throw it hard to first base. And he is just going to get him. Umpire took his time on that call. So Claro grounds out to shortstop. That was a long throw, but it was there in throw. time. He kind of stayed planted whenever he threw that ball. Surprised he got enough heat on that throw to make the first base in time, but he did. So that'll bring up number nine, shortstop Drew Mize. He is 0 for 1 so far. He's going to take the first pitch. High breaking ball inside by his head. Mize struck out in his first at bat to lead off the ball game against Voss. Next pitch is ball two. So he's ahead in the count. 2 0. He wiggles his bat, moves his feet. 2 0 pitch to him is swung on and miss on a breaking ball almost in the dirt. It was a good breaking ball. Fooled him a little bit. Yeah, I got him to chase that one down and outside. So 2 1 pitch, 2. Mize will be taken downstairs for ball three. So three, one pitch to Mize will be ball four. So he takes that outside breaking ball. And now there's one runner on base for Joseph Kuhlholz. Yeah, see his, see his, uh, all the bottom part of his hands poking out of his batting gloves there. I don't know. Maybe oh, that's yeah, how they're designed. Are. I don't know. I think deserving the Mink League Player of the Week ought to have some decent batting gloves. Well, if it's working for him, might as well keep him on, right? So Keel steps in. First pitch to him is breaking ball in the dirt. Good block by Pawnee, the catcher. So we have runner on first base and Drew Mize who had a walk and Imhoff is going to throw over to first base but he makes it there safely standing up. So Keyholes is batting third base tonight or is playing third base tonight excuse me. Normally watch them play shortstop but Amelia will switch it up for tonight. Sticks the next pitch for ball two. As he is also heading the count against Imhoff. We saw it in the last game against the Renegades for the Legends. Imhoff struggled with control as he had seven walks. He's showing that a little bit tonight, but he's done a better job than we saw last time. But he's going to throw next pitch for a ball. He's going to make a 3-0 on Keyholes. On deck, we have right fielder Andrew Patton. He is 0 for 1. Or no, excuse me, he's 1 for 1. His pit runner's going to take off to second base. Ball gets away anyway, so that's going to be ball 4. Runner's on first and second now. Two walks in the inning. So here's Andrew Patton. He singled the right field in his first at bat. I don't know why that keeps slipping out of my mind. I keep saying no one's been on base, but has. Yeah, Patton has five home runs this season, tied for a team lead with Carter Mize. So stepping in on the right side, wearing number 33. Patton moves his bat up and down. First pitch to him is going to be down low for ball one. So Imhoff is slowly losing his control, losing his command. Oh, 
Next pitch to Patton will be swung on a miss for strike one. A little delayed on that call. I had a yawn. Nothing boring going on. It is still hot outside. Sun has gone away, but it is still pretty humid. Next pitch to Patton is in, inside for ball two. You would love to see him get home run number six here, wouldn't you? I would. That'd be A-OK. -okay. So got runners on first and second. 2-1 pitch to Patton is big cut. Swung on a miss for strike two. Runner on second and Drew Mize. Runner on first and Joseph Keyholes. As Patton is even in the count and two and two. Still one out in the inning. 2-2 two -two pitch. Downstairs for ball three. I'm off a little frustrated after that pitch. So full count pitch on Andrew Patton. Runners are going to go the second and third. That pitch is blasted left field, and it's going to be caught by the left fielder. Trying was, to do the hit and run there. Yeah, they did, but runners have to get back. That ball was hitting on line by Andrew Patton, but just couldn't get over the head of left fielder. Left fielder Blake McFeeders. So next up we have number four hitter in Carter Mize. Batting on the left side. And he is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. This is where the last several games, this is where the Renegades have done their damage and scored their runs with two outs. You would love to see them do that here. First pitch to Mize is taken low and inside for ball one. Mize has a 1-0 count. Imhoff looks to second. Runners are going to take off to second and third. Throw down to third base. He's going to be safe. So Mize and Keoghles pull off the double steal as they are at second and third now. And they executed that to perfection. So Mize steps back. Step, I can never say that line right. Steps back in. 2-0 no pitch to him is going to be upstairs for ball three. And you would think that the Legends would have to leave Imhoff in, right? I mean, they don't have many pitchers on their team. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. 3-0 no pitch to Carter Mice is going to be swung on and hammered to right field. Just fouled. Wow, he murdered that pitch, but... He crushed it to foul. Yeah, according to Point Streak, the Legends only have three pitchers on their roster. They're using their second already, and it's only in the bottom of the third. We'll see if they have more, see if they've made changes since then. As Mice is going to take ball four. So now bases are loaded for Brady Voss. We'll see what he can do with runners on first, second, and third. Lost the doubleheader against Des Moines. He had three RBIs, had two walks, one strike, or two strikeouts, rather. First pitch to him is going to be breaking the ball inside for strike one. Voss is trying to add to that RBI total right here. Bring these runners in. So Imhoff is trying to work out of a jam. Next pitch to Voss is skipped in the dirt for ball one. The catcher Pawnee has made some great plays to keep the ball in front. The boss is even in the count, one and one. Next pitch delivered to him is going to be taken outside for ball two. So 
So 2-1 count on Brady Voss. Next pitch delivered to him is hammered in the deep center field. Center fielder running into the warning track, and he's going to make the catch at the wall, <laughs> and he's going to open up the... To bust through the gate. He's going to bust through the back wall. <laughs> so great catch there by center fielder Ryan Pat Paschel. He is, <laughs> he is working on closing that back gate shut. Throws the ball back in, takes off his glove. He's got to use both hands to fix that thing. So Renegades leave the runners stranded on first, segment, third. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. There are things in life you should always do. Always say please and thank you. Always get a good night's rest and always take care of your teeth. After all, you're only given one set of permanent teeth to last you a lifetime. Southwest Dental Care is always the place to go for the highest quality dental care. They offer comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry services for all patients of all ages. Their experienced and compassionate team is there to help you achieve lifelong oral health and a stunning smile. To find out more about Southwest Dental Care, call them at 573 6 634-4909 or visit southwestdentalcarejc.com to get the best smile in town you mustache to southwest dental care attention class of 2021 it's time to think about your future it's time for you to take action it's time to apply to state tech but you better hurry because space is filling up fast in fact more than 85 percent of our seats will be filled by march so don't delay and find out firsthand why State Tech is ranked the best college in the country for the second year in a row. And we are proud to be known as the employer's choice. Apply today at statetechmo.edu. Helsher has pitched in 12.1 innings. He has 14 strikeouts. He has 10 walks. He has an ERA of 4.37. Sorry, I was trying to win the autograph bat. So Helsher, the left-hander, southpaw, is going to step in for the Renegades. And I did not hear who was batting for the Legends. Okay, this is Hunter Backs. I thought that's who they said, but I had to double check. So now we have Hunter Backs. I'm running out of spots in my book here. So he takes the first two pitches for balls. He's going to try and bunt his way on. <laughs> That's a pretty awful bunt right back to Helsher. Oh, and he's going to throw it high and away to Mize. Well, that's one way to get on base. And every, everyone is laughing, including the umpire. As the big guy, Hunter Backs, makes it to first base. On an error by pitcher Colton Helsher. He reaches on an E1. So we head to the top of the lineup. <laughs> and he's got some Bax, moves there. Bax is going to keep on running. He's going to make it to second base on a pass ball. This Morris at bat. Yep, we got second baseman Cameron Morris up to bat. Yeah, Hunter Bax. He is... Showing his speed. Yeah. It is not blazed by you fast, but it's <laughs> all that matters is how you get there. He's actually going to get issued over to third base now with the ball. He is just getting his exercise in. So Helsher already having a rough start to the inning. He's thrown four pitches. Next pitch will be ball two to Cameron Morris. Next pitch to Morris will be taken inside for strike one. I think they had somebody claim the bat. So 2-1 pitch on to Morris. He's going to slap it to second base. Burns going to make the backhand play. He's going to come home with it. And he's going to get Bax down by a mile. I think Bax 
wisely gave himself up there, and he could have had a good play collision at the plate with Claro, but decided he would just give himself up and be out number one. He did enough running. Well, you know, it's a non-league game. We don't want to get anybody hurt, and that uh, could have been a, a very high-speed train collision there. <laughs> you are correct. Next up we have the catcher, Isaiah Pani. Hope I'm not incorrect pronouncing that, but if I am, please correct me. But normally on that play, Burton just made, normally you would not go home on that. You normally throw it to first, you just give up the run. But on a runner like Bax, he's going to, as Pawnee rips that in the left field, and tracking that down, he's going to make the catch. That is Caden Deal. So Deal catches the fly out to left for out number two. Like I was saying, normally on that play, Burton made a backhanded play and he came straight home. Bax, well, we told, told you he's run a lot so far, but probably normally not a runner. Is gunned down at home. Next pitch is fly out straight to center field to Brady Voss. And no damage is done for the Renegades as they get out of that inning pretty quickly. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Biblical Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in the Jefferson City, Riverwalk Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverwalk Christian Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Uh -huh. I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We <laughs> love it. Oh, we love it. <laughs> but we're thinking about Tokyo. Uh -huh. I know a guy. You know an agent too. It's Kathy Rush at Remax Jefferson City. Call her today at 573 761 340. New pitcher in for the Legends. We do not know his name, but he's a right hander. He throws sidearm. And he is wearing a black shirt. That's about all we can tell you for right now. He does have a gray hat on. Yes, great analysis. I missed that too. I'm not going to lie. This is a, I'm enjoying this game. I'm getting a little popcorn between innings. <laughs> You're doing a great job doing the play-by-play. -play. Might have to do this more often. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm loving it so far. As we have number six hitter, left fielder Caden Deal up to bat. He's going to swing at the first pitch down and low for strike one. So, um, Legends... It's going to call him Pitcher. Pitcher has him down 0-1. Next pitch is popped up in the air to left field. McFeeder is on, on his way to catch that. Now be out number one. That was a well-hit ball. Batting seventh, we got second baseman, number 20, Ben Burton. Is that... Uh... Chris Schneider. I think that's who's on the mound. No. I'm, yeah, I'm not even going to try. Yeah, Schnucken, Stuck, Stuck oh, and Stuck and Schneider. Stuck and Schneider. You know what's surprising? I knew a Stuck and Schneider in grade school before, so. I don't think it was this guy. Oh, it was definitely not this guy. First two pitches of Burton. Ball and a strike. I'll make it a 1 1 count. So we have pitcher Stuck and Schneider on the mound. We saw him bat. Not sure what he bat. Next pitch to Burton will be ball two. On deck we have designated hitter Hamilton Anderson, who is 0 for 1 so far. 2 1 pitch to Burton is going to be swung on and missed. 
for strike two. He was kind of way off track of that ball. That was kind of nowhere near his bat. Burton wiggles his bat, gets ready for the pitch. Next pitch is taken outside for ball three, making a full count. Just past 8 o'clock here on the Show Me Sports Network. Lake Gasaway here, joined by Grayson Smith with the play-by-play -play tonight. Full count pitch to Bernie. He's going to ground that ball up the middle. Shortstop is going to make a little sliding play, and he's going to throw it away. And Burton's going to be safe at first base. That was a heck of a try by the shortstop and Kay. Yeah, Kay did a great job of getting to that ball. He just had a low throw. First baseman couldn't dig that out. I don't think it would have been there in time anyways. First baseman and Travis Kay, so possibly his brother, wasn't able to dig out that ball. But anyways, Burton gets on. Next up, we have Hamilton Anderson, designated hitter for tonight. Anderson struck out in his first at bat. He's batting eight tonight. First pitch to him is inside for strike one. I don't think he liked that call. It did look pretty inside, but... Well, I will say, regardless of if it's right or not, the umpire, home plate umpire, has been consistent all night. He has indeed. Owen pitch to Anderson. He's going to swing and hit a screamer out the center field. and He's going to make another great catch at the wall. Wow. That took the gate out again. I think he landed like at the exact same gates once again. But he made a fantastic running catch to get Anderson out. It is Paschals? Pa Paschals? Paschals. Pa yeah. So Anderson couldn't have hit it any better than that. Got unlucky. Pasha was able to make a great catch. Next up, we have the number nine hitter, Ali Claro. He is catching for tonight's ball game, not wearing number four. First pitch to Claro is down and in for ball one. So apparently the pitcher is not Schnook and Schneider. I don't know who it is. False alarm, everyone. Not stuck in Schneider. 1-0 pitch. Runner's going to second base in Burton. He's going to slide. And he's going to be in there safely. Claro swung and miss. Swung and miss. Make it strike one. But Burton makes it down to second base. So now Claro has a runner on second base with two outs. Pitch on the way. He's going to swing and miss. For strike two. Burton standing on second base. Clara has a one two count. Pitcher delivers and it's swung on a miss. Strike three. Pitch low in the dirt. Couldn't resist. Pulled the trigger. So Renegade's got a little unlucky in that inning. It was an absolute laser out the center field. was caught. Could have been a run, but it was not. So no damage done. As we head to the top of the fifth inning, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching. Searching Avon Carti. Live beautifully with Avon. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie!
Well, fans on the field just got done playing a game. I honestly have never seen a game like that before. Saw Blake's daughter, Alyssa. Looked like they were swinging a ball on like a rope at an RC car, a yes. remote control car. So they did that uh, oh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, well, it was at the All-Star Games, actually, when they did it. And each team had a monster truck car representing them. And they had a couple of different heats that they had to race. And then the uh, last round, they had the gauntlet and had people trying to knock them out of the way. Definitely one of the more interesting games I've ever seen on the field. As we have Helsher still on the mound. First pitch to center field of Paschal is going to be base hit up the middle. So well hit ball just straight up the middle. Yeah, he'd even give me time to introduce the fantastic play he made earlier. As he ran full sprints right into the fence, catching the laser from Hamilton Anderson. Twice. Yeah, he has done that twice. He but must have well he secured the <laughs> gate out there though. Yeah, he did not break it or open it this time. As Helsher will try to throw to first base, runner gets back in safely. Batting fifth, we have Kevin Hagner. As he is up 1-0 in the count. He is the EH. Everyday hitter, emergency hitter. He is some kind of hitter. That's e all we know. Extra, extra hitter. Extra hitter. Ooh, and <laughs> absolutely chops at that pitch up high. Don't know if he could have made contact on that same pitch if he swung like that. If it came at him a thousand times. That's just what you call a bad swing. Well, he probably doesn't play a lot of baseball nowadays. Next pitch to him is slapped in the right field. We'll see if that ball is going to drop. Right fielder coming in. Patton, he's going to make the catch. Get another hit that goes to the opposite field. Yeah, he's done that twice so far. First up was... Uh, Ground ball to second. Now he's going to fly out to right field. He's batting six. We have Travis K, the first baseman. He's going to wiggle his bat. Gets ready in his stance. First pitch from Colton Helcher. It's going to be a breaking ball in the dirt. Great stop by Claro. We'll step back in here. So one-all pitch to K. Next pitch is going to be roped out the right field. Patton on his horse is going to stop in his tracks and make the catch. The runner's going to stay put at first base. So two straight flyouts to Andrew Patton. That's be two outs in the inning for Bryce K, the shortstop. Bryce almost made a great play up the middle at shortstop. But couldn't quite get the outs. First pitch is a breaking ball swung on a missed for strike one. He was just a hair under that and a hair behind it. Yeah, if he was on time, that ball would have gone a long way. It was kind of a hanger pitch. So Kay has one strike on him. Elsher looks at first base. Next pitch is spiked in the dirt. Gets a little bit behind Claro. Throw down to second base, and it's in time, and he got him. Great play by Ali Claro. That ball got away from him. He stopped, got the ball, and just chucked it to second base. And it was on the money, honey. So that will end the inning. Still no runs for either team. So we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. You're listening to... Exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Renegade and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Swanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you've earned. The law offices of Russ Swanigan.
There are things in life you should always do. Always say please and thank you. Always get a good night's rest and always take care of your teeth. After all, you're only given one set of permanent teeth to last you a lifetime. Southwest Dental Care is always the place to go for the highest quality dental care. They offer comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry services for all patients of all ages. Their experienced and compassionate team is there to help you achieve lifelong oral health and a stunning smile. To find out more about Southwest Dental Care, call them at 573 573- 634-4909 or visit southwestdentalcarejc.com to get the best smile in town you mustache to southwest dental care Same pitcher on the mound for the Legends. Gray hat, black shirt. That's all we know. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, still no runs on the board. Complete opposite game of what we saw last time between these two teams. As leadoff hitter, shortstop Drew Mai steps up to the bat. I'm going to give a shout out to our listeners here. We have listeners down in Aruba and Arizona. Also Georgia in there. As well as Alabama, Mississippi, up in Illinois. First pitch to Drew Mize will be strike one. And a whole host of listeners across the Midwest here. Just picked up one over in Minnesota. Next pitch to Drew Mize will be outside for ball one. Mize got on his last at bat with a walk. The leadoff hitter for tonight's game leading off this innings. Big cut, cut and a foul ball straight back. Update from the Mink League tonight. The game really the only game of interest. Uh, I guess they're both interesting. But the one that has most importance here on the Renegades. Sedalia Bombers leading the Joplin Outlaws 2 to nothing right now. That's top of the fourth. As Mize... Checks his swing. He goes around. Ball gets away from the catcher, but he throws to first base. Now be out number one. Also down at uh, Clarinda, the A's leading the Mustangs 2-1 to one right now. They're playing at Clarinda Municipal Stadium. But as we said, Sedalia, we really got to have Sedalia win and put a couple of losses, hang a couple losses on Joplin. Then Joplin will be here Friday and Saturday. And then we got to uh, put a couple losses on them on our own accord. And that will secure the first ever home playoff game for the Renegades. Next up we have Joseph Kuholz, the third baseman for tonight's ball game as he takes first pitch for a ball. Kuholz is batting 337 to start the game. He has heated up in this past week here in the Mink League Player of the Week honors. Yeah, he's the third Renegade to do so. He had seven RBIs in the doubleheader, both doubleheader games wow. on Sunday, including two home runs. Five hits in total. Next pitch will be a strike. So he has a 2-1 count on him. Well, driver come driving through the ballpark here with that gut, with that uh, RC car. <laughs> Next pitch is fouled straight back for strike two. Apparently her parents haven't given her much driving lessons. <laughs> That would be my daughter there. Well, it's probably a good thing. She does seem a little young, a little short. I'll tell you, though, you show her something one time and she'll remember it forever. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch on the cue holes. He's going to slap that to his first base. Quick couple hopper, and he's going to field it. Make the play, and that's going to be out number two. Next up, we have number 33, right fielder Andrew Patton stepping up. He had the first base hit the game. He's, he slapped that ball to right field, his first plate appearance. So two, two quick outs. So we're still in the bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch to Patton. Great breaking ball. Slides back in for strike one.
The all one pitch to the patent is going to be looked at for strike two. This patent is quickly behind 0 and 2. On deck, we have number 29, Dawson Schumann. Next pitch is swung on in the dirt for strike three. Throw down to first base, and that will end the inning. As really quick inning, nothing gets done again. As we're going to head to the top of the sixth inning. Still a tie game of 0 0. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions for forward-thinking businesses. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, predictive dialer, outbound call notifications, cloud services, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. Your customers will have access to information they need quickly and accurately. Most importantly, this allows customers to interact with your business on their terms at times that are convenient for them. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421-5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com. Centurion Cares, innovative communication solutions. on the mound for the Renegades, we have number 27, DJ Seelbach. Looking up his stats, he is right-hand thrower. He's pitched in 10 games. He has 21 innings pitched. He has 22 strikeouts, 14 walks, and he has an ERA of 7.28. He also has one save. So he gets done with his warm-up pitches. A couple of substitutions here. A set to Neuer at third base. And Jason Marte. That shortstop. That shortstop. So leading off the inning, we have number eight hitter, Derek Scheichels up to bat. First pitch from Seelbach will be ball one. Now this will be oh, K because me. he was a bat when the runner was caught at second. Oh, you are correct. I forgot about that. So we have Bryce K up to bat. So he has up 1-0. Next pitch, he's going to ground ball to Donoyer. Donoyer is going to spin, throw, and get him out. Of it's called. Never mind. It's called safe at first base. I think he was safe. Uh, he looked out to me, but. Let's go, Gates! Anyways, he is aboard as he gets an infield single. And next up, we have Derek Schichels. Another EH. Kind of like what you said earlier, extra hitter, I think. That might be the most appropriate thing to say. Seelback's going to throw over to first base. And Kay is going to stand up and be safe. You know, it could be a lot of things, but that's the good thing about playing a non-league game. You can have some fun let everybody bat. And no one will care. Except for when the Renegades... Except if they do lose. Which we hope does not happen. But it's still a tie game. No runs on the board still for both teams. Runner goes to second base. Throw by Claro. He's got him dead in his tracks again. And that's another out by Claro. He's putting on a defensive show tonight. As he cuts down his second runner in two innings. So Bryce Kay is caught stealing at second base. Now make it out number one. So there's an 0-1 pitch on 
to Shikles. Sealback winds up. He delivers. Next pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. Sealback has a very unique delivery here. Yes, he does. Really, it's just almost a delayed delivery. He starts towards the plate, and then the arm snaps forward, and the ball's delivered. Yeah, I like that word, snaps. It's kind of how he does it with his leg and with his arm. Ooh, breaking ball. It's inside, and it's going to hit the... It's going to hit Shikles. So as soon as the runner was gunned down, we have another runner on. As we have Parker Schneiders up to bat, the third baseman for the Jeff City Legends. Yeah, Seelbach, as we said, he kicks that front leg, that left leg, and puts the elbow forward, and then the ball goes. And a quick pitch, and it's going to get strike one. Fastball low. Really yeah. show off that leg kick there. Yeah, it really conceals that ball as well as long as possible, trying to keep it from the hitter. So he's going to sidearm that one. That's going to be fouled off for strike two. Yeah, he must be listening because you're right. He's changed up his delivery the last two pitches. He went from quick pitch to, I think that was a little bit of a quick pitch there, but he goes complete sidearm. You've seen that from both teams tonight. Both teams tonight. Two pitchers have tried switching up and gone sidearm. So 0-2 pitch on Schneiders. It's going to be inside in the dirt for ball one. I was trying to work to the inside lower part of the plate there and get Schneiders to chase one out of the zone there. So we have a 1-2 count on Schneiders. He's going to throw over to first base. He's going to be safe. So still just one out. One runner on first base. Seelbach gets the pitch he wants. He delivers. It's going to be in the dirt. Ball two. Clara walks in front of the plate. Gives a little nod. Tells Seelbach, you got this. Yeah, it's tied up at Sedalia. The Outlaws have tied up the Bombers at two apiece. That's top of the fifth inning. 6-1 lead for Clarinda over St. Joe Mustangs. Clarinda just looked like an unstoppable team so far. Next pitch is fouled straight back for, I think it's still a 2-2 count. I think I saw early on the standings, Clarinda was, what, 26-4? and four? Uh, You were correct. Wow. But one of those four losses did come at the hands of the Renegades here at historic Ernie Vivian Field. Now that's bragging rights if I've ever heard them. So they just... They have some team going on right now. Runner goes to second base. Coro couldn't get the ball to his hand. Only four hits in the game so far. Two for each team. One error in favor of the Renegades. Schneiders now has a full count on him. And Schleichels steals second base. Full count pitch to Schneiders. Sealback delivers. It's going to be inside for ball four. So Renegade's looking to turn a double play here. And we officially heard it from the PA announcer. It is extra hitter. I can hear fans questioning that also. We have Josiah Imhoff. He takes the first pitch for a ball. Imhoff was pitching earlier in this game. He's still batting as legends are batting their entire roster right now. So 1-0 pitch to Imhoff. It's going to be swung on and chopped straight up the middle. Marte is going to field it. And he thought about throwing to second base. He doesn't. And now every runner is going to be safe. Marte should have just gone straight to first base. He hesitated throwing to second base, but a runner was basically already there. 
So everyone's safe. Now we have bases loaded for Blake McFeeder, the left fielder. McFeeders moves his bat up and down. First pitch from Seelbach will be in the dirt for ball one. Good block from Claro. Umpire calls time. So McFeeders, the left fielder, has bases loaded right now. Still one out in the inning. Renegade still hoping for that double play. They missed their chance just a couple seconds ago. So McFeeders has a 1-0 count. Next pitch delivered to him will be outside for ball two. Seelbach having some control issues of his own here. Yeah, according to point streak, he already has 14 walks in 21 innings pitched. Next pitch is fastball right down the middle for strike one. Looked like McFeeders was taking that pitch all the way. Decided not to swing that 2-0 fastball. So now it's a 2-1 pitch to McFeeders. And is down and in for... Strike two. Good pitch from Seelbach. He just got the corner. So now it's an even count in two and two. Still one out in the inning. And good job of Seelbach to work the inside part of the plate as well as the downstairs part of the plate. He's been missing a lot with his breaking ball. We'll see if he goes fastball again right here. Two two pitches delivered. He's going to swing and foul that one off. Stays alive. So still a 2-2 count on McFeeders. He goes his bats, moves it up and down, gets ready for Seelbach's pitch. Seelbach finds his pitch. Looks to third. The delivers. McFeeders is going to single in the right field for a base hit. Patton's going to pick it up. He's going to throw it the cutoff, man, or he's going to throw it straight to home um, on a dot. Wow, that was a great throw from Patton. But the Legends get their first run of the game on a base hit from McFeeders. So now we have extra hitter in, was it Stuckenschneider? Schneider. There's Schneider in the name. That's all I can tell you. Tell you just a second here. First pitch to him will be inside for ball one. And it gets away from Claro. I didn't see that ball bounce out of his glove. It like, looked like it went through it. Stuck in Schneider. Yep, will be stuck in Schneider up the bat. He really leans back. Yes, he does. What was his bat? Next pitch will be inside for strike one. Even in the count, one one. I'm afraid he might fall over in the batter's box. <laughs> Digs that right leg in and really leans back. Next pitch from Seelbach is kind of a check swing. <laughs> I say he did go around. Yeah, umpire asked if he goes around. It was pretty clear he did. Well, that'll make it strike two. So one two count on Stuckenschneider. Sealback will deliver. And it's gonna be inside, gets past Clorel. Runners coming to the plate. And he's gonna make it there safely. And that'll make it a two-nothing ball game. As Legends score on a base hit and a pass ball. Hey, you're good, boy. You're good. Why are you ducking out of the way? 
My wife, our <laughs> official statistician of sorts, she was ducking for cover there. Play was right in front of us. It's two two pitch on. Broken bat. Broken bat. He's gonna hit it right back to the pitcher. Yep, there's some more firewood for the end of the season bonfire. <laughs> So it's stuck in Schneider, grounds out to the pitcher, Seelbach. As D'Amelio is going to walk up to the mound, he's going to take Seelbach out of the game. As we are going to have a new pitcher in the ball game. Looks to be number 13. That's Mick Von Felt. Spend enough time with him in the press box. He's doing homework. He's taking summer classes. Oh, excuse me, that's number 17. I thought it was 13 for a second. If you are incorrect, it is Mick Von Felt, left-handed southpaw pitcher. So I can tell you he is a very studious player as he has been in the press box, using the Internet, working on homework several, several games this season. <laughs> Von Felt has pitched in 10 games. He has pitched in 16 in the third innings. He has 15 strikeouts. He does have 20 walks. He has an ERA of 9.91. He's from St. Charles, Iowa, left-handed thrower. 5'11", 170 pounder, rather. Freshman at Missouri S&T. He's looking to get one more out to get the Renegades out of this inning where the Legends have scored two runs so far. So far, he's kind of spiking the ball on his warm-up pitches. Check in on the other Mink League games here. Let me refresh the screen. It's still tied 2-2, two to two, bottom of the fifth inning at Liberty Park Stadium in Sedalia. It's a game we're really hoping that Sedalia wins over Joplin. Clarinda A's leading the St. Joseph Mustangs 6-1 to one at Clarinda. That game really no bearing other than to uh, maybe make it a little closer spread as Clarinda sits at 26-4, the Mustangs 16-15. They're 10 and a half games back in the North Division. Wow. Third place in the division right now is uh, Chillicothe Mudcats. They're 13 games. And Des Moines Peak Prospects, they're 10-24. and 24. They're 18 full games back. In the North Division, again here in the South Division, Bay Griffins, their season is done, so it's between the Sedalia Bombers, the Renegades, and the Joplin Outlaws. Renegades and Outlaws have the same record, so they're going on win percentage, so it'd be good if they could get a couple of wins by way of Sedalia and then uh, face them at the end of the week and pick up a couple on their own. So Von Felt finishes the warm-up pitches. Next up, we have the number, <laughs> number 12 hitter in Hunter Bax. As Cloro's going to step up to the mound and talk to Von Felt, make sure they're on the same page. As they get things settled, looking for the first pitch to Bax. First pitch to him is going to be outside for ball one. A lot of balls thrown in this inning. Bonfell looking to change that and finally throw some strikes, but he is down 1-0 to Bax. Next pitch on the way, inside for ball two. So we have runners on second and third. 2-0 pitch to Bax is going to be down for strike one. Two one pitch on the way is outside for ball three. At least first base is open, so Max could be placed there, but then you're going to go back to the top of the lineup. Up. 
on deck, we have second baseman Cameron Morris. His next pitch from Von Feld is swung on a miss for strike two. So now Von Feld has a full count on Hunter Backs. So this is a make or break pitch right here. Full count pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Von Felt gets out of the inning. So Renegades give up two runs on a single and a pass ball. Legends now lead 2-0 as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. You are listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Attention class of 2021. It's time to think about your future. It's time for you to take action. It's time to apply to State Tech. But you better hurry because space is filling up fast. In fact, more than 85% of our seats will be filled by March. So don't delay and find out firsthand why State Tech is ranked the best college in the country for the second year in a row. And we are proud to be known as the employer's choice. Apply today at statetechmo.edu. Liberal Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in Jefferson City, Liberal Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Liberal Christian Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Well, we'll go to the Bottom of the sixth inning, new pitcher in the ball game. Not sure who that is. Mr. Blue Shirt, Blue Hat. So stepping into the box, we have Dawson Schumann. He is stepping in for Carter Mize, first baseman. First pitch to him is down and in for ball one. And actually gets back to the net here. Next pitch is swung on a miss for strike one as catcher quickly runs out to his pitcher and wants to have a little talk with him. Yeah, as we said, uh, really the Renegades partially control their own destiny this season here as we wind down as they'll play a couple of non-league games, at least one more non-league game, trying for another one on Thursday. But Friday and Saturday, the Joplin Outlaws come to town, and that is two big games right there, as if the Renegades can win and get some help from Sedalia over the next couple of days. They will have a home playoff game first in the franchise history. Next pitch is upstairs for ball two. We know they're going to go to the playoffs. It's just a matter of where they're going to play. Close pitch, but next pitch is a ball three. Yeah, I'm excited for the playoffs. Anything can happen. You can have a great regular season, but you can absolutely fluke out in the playoffs as Dawson Schumann's going to take a walk. So batting fourth, we have center fielder Brady Voss. Carter Mize is going to resume duties on first base, but just a little further. So will be the first base coach right now. First pitch to Voss is going to be taken low for ball one. He looks different with the little scully cap on over there. <laughs> it's different than his regular regular padded helmet. Next pitch is crushed out to center field by Brady Voss. <laughs> but it's going to be a fly out to center field. And that'll be out number one. That was a well-hit ball. Just got to the warning track. It is 375 out there. 
That one about 367. 375 in center field and 300 at the at the poles. Next up, we have left fielder Caden Deal. He's going to swing at the first pitch, and he's going to hit a high fly ball in the infield as I'll be out number two as one pitch, one out, and I'll make it two outs in the inning. And I'll quickly bring up second baseman Ben Burton. So blue shirt, blue hat combo pitcher has two outs so far. First pitch to Burton is going to be a breaking ball high and outside for ball one. Next pitch is a liner out to center field. Center fielder coming in. He's going to dive. He made and it. He made the catch. Wow. I didn't think he made I thought he trapped that ball, but he made the catch. I thought I got away from him. <laughs> so Burton hits a liner up the middle, but it's going to be caught by the center fielder, Ryan Paschal. He's made a couple of great plays tonight. As he is just putting on a clinic out there in center field. So we're going to head to the top of the seventh inning. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here in the Show Me Sports Network. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Uh -huh. I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We love, oh, it. We love it. But we're thinking about Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I know a guy. You know an agent too. It's Kathy Rush at Remax Jefferson City. Call her today at 573 761 3405. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Carty has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. Live beautifully with Avon. Cameron Morris up to bat. First pitch from Von Felt will be down for strike one. Oh, one pitch from Von Felt is down in the dirt for. I got it. <laughs> ball one. It's literally right. Hit to Blake and I. You know, if our hands could reach through the net, we'd make off pretty good at the prize wheel with all these balls. <laughs> yeah. Next thing we know, we're going to be bringing gloves. Next pitch is fouled off for strike two. That one pops over the home plate umpire. Morris has a 1-2 count. Von Felt looking to put him away. Next pitch is in the dirt for ball two. On deck we have Isaiah Pani, the catcher. Next pitch from Von Felt will be ball three. So now it makes it a full count. Full count pitch in the dirt for ball four as Von Felt loses him. And I'll bring up catcher Isaiah Pani. So runner on first base. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Two nothing ball game as Legends lead the Renegades. First pitch to Pawnee is strike one. So 
So Morris walks. He's at first base. 0-1 pitch to Pawnee. It's swung on a miss for strike two. I got gnats in my face. Cannot see. Pawnee has an 0-2 count on him. Bonfell looking to put him away. No outs in the inning. Next pitch is swung on a miss, strike three. And you can write a K next to his name. Bonfeld having two strikeouts. Next up we have right fielder Gage Bax. Batting three for tonight's game. He has one out, one runner on first. Vonfeld's going to check the runner at first base, and he's going to be safe on the pickoff. Trying to keep a close eye here on the game in Sedalia. Still tied at two apiece. Top of the sixth inning, however, runners on the corners. Next pitch to, or first pitch to backs will be ball one. The outlaws have runners on the corners with two outs. Yep, they just took the lead at three to nothing. Sorry, three to two, rather. Next pitch to Bax is swung on and hit a line drive out to left field, and that's going to get past the left fielder, Caden Deal. Runners are heading to third base. He's going to be sent home. Throw to the plate on the line of Claro. He's going to be out at the plate. What a relay throw from Marte. Yeah, Marte took his time and got the throw. Great job there. That was one of the best relays we've seen all year. As ball was hit right over the head of Caden Deal. Laser throw to Marte, and he just threw a bullet to home plate. And Claro had him dead in his tracks. Yeah. So that prevents a run from being on the board. No reason there for Marte to have to rush the throw. Takes his time, makes a count. Yeah, he did an excellent job on that. Now there's two outs in the inning. Runner on second base. First pitch to... The extra hitter, in, or excuse me, the center fielder, Ryan Paschal. Paschal has made some great defensive plays in center field tonight. Second pitch to him is swung on a miss for strike two, or excuse me, strike one. And will even it at one ball, one strike. So one Renegades, ball, oops, excuse me. We're going to get trail two to nothing right now. One ball, one strike, two outs. Next pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Yeah, luckily it's they're losing by two and not three. So Pastel's ahead in the count. 2-1 pitch from Von Felt. He delivers. Pretty bad swing, but I'll make it strike two. He did trace that one a little far out the zone. Yeah, ball was outside. But if he connects, it's probably one of those little bloopers that uh, falls in and you get a hit for. Yeah, a blooper or a ground ball that he just slaps. As Von Feld's going to check on the runner at second. Yeah, you're right. If he gets on top of that, it's a ground ball. If he gets under it, it's a... Probably a bloop to right field. So even count, two and two, he's going to foul it. Another one for the prize. Right wheel. in my head. So I'll keep it at two and two. Two is across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Paschal digs in. Next pitch from Paschal is going to be, or excuse me, from Von Feld is going to be slapped foul. We're still in the top of the seventh inning with a runner on second base. Legends leading by two. Two nothing ball game. Next pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three. You can put a K next to his name. As Von Feld gets out of the inning, pretty clutch relay throw. Dio and Marte, as we head to 
our seventh inning stretch. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! As a former veteran, for two years I tried to get my disability and nothing worked. Then I called Wes Swinigan and he got the results that I really needed. I hear stories like this all the time where people are overwhelmed with the system. As a former Social Security attorney, I will help you get the benefits that you deserve. Russ Wanigan lives and works in Mid-Missouri, and he's here to help you. The help you deserve for the benefits you earn. The law offices of Russ Wanigan. Bottom of the seventh inning, same pitcher on the mound for the Legends as we have designated hitter Hamilton Anderson stepping up to the plate. That same pitcher on the mound is one we're not sure who that is. Blue hat, blue shirt combo. Yeah, Legends wearing all different types of uniforms tonight. His first pitch to Anderson is outside for strike one and a groan from the crowd. 0-1 pitch to Anderson is going to rope, rope it up the middle for a base hit. Good piece of hitting from Anderson as he just slaps at the center field. So we have leadoff hitter on for Alec Leroux. Update from Sedalia. Well, the Outlaws had the bases loaded with two outs. They scored a run. Then had the bases loaded with those two outs. They squandered that with a strikeout, but they still lead... Three to two as they go to the bottom of the sixth inning of play. Really hoping that Sedalia can come back and take the lead and get the win. So Claro steps in. First pitch to him is outside for strike one. Now they're cr or grown from the crowd. 0-1 pitch to Claro, and he's going to look at that one for a ball. And I'm kind of with the crowd here. That was kind of the same pitch, but that one's called a ball. That'll make it 1-1. Next pitch is up high. Ball two. Nobody argued with that one. <laughs> no one should argue with that one. So runner at first in Hamilton Anderson. 2-1 pitch. Is popped high in the air. Still playable. First baseman coming in, and he makes the catch for out number one. And now we'll bring in shortstop number nine, Drew Mize. Or, excuse me, I forgot he was substituted, so it'll be number 23, Jason Marte. I forgot to write that down on my paper. So first pitch to Marte is upstairs for strike one. Next pitch to him is upstairs for ball one. So one's going crazy. One ball, one strike, one out. One runner on first. Next pitch to Marte is a ground ball. And it stays fair. <laughs> that thing was foul, and it had enough English on it. It bounced fair. So he hits a... He hits an unlucky ball to first base for... At one, and then... Not sure what the legend... They're trying to tag the runner on at second base. Umpires called him safe, but they're talking to the... Shortstop right now. Yeah. 
I'm not sure what he would be out for if they tagged him. Since the ball I, was think, I think they're just having a short conversation. I believe they do know each other. That's Kay and the home plate umpire. Yeah, home plate umpire has been all smiles tonight. Now batting, we have number 15, Seth DeNoyer, up to bats. He is substituted for Joseph Gilholz. Have uh, time called as somebody's blinding the second base umpire. I got kind of scared. He started pointing my way. He heard what you were saying about him. <laughs> First pitch to Denoyer is outside for ball one. Why? Well, for a split second, I was like, "Did he just call time?" Because I was writing down Denoyer's name, but. He's I just appreciate. keeping you on your toes. <laughs> yeah. Next pitch is ball two on Seth DeNoyer. DeNoyer is going to rip a ball into center field. That ball might get down. And Paschal makes yet another catch. He has made how many catches tonight? About how many good ones? Several. That's like his fourth one tonight. Well, he robs the Renegades of another base hit and potentially a run. So you want to go back to college? <laughs> and send him to majors at this point. So Renegades don't score any runs. So leave the runner stranded at it first. As we head to the top of the eighth inning, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. There are things in life you should always do. Always say please and thank you. Always get a good night's rest and always take care of your teeth. After all, you're only given one set of permanent teeth to last you a lifetime. Southwest Dental Care is always the place to go for the highest quality dental care. They offer comprehensive general and cosmetic dentistry services for all patients of all ages. Their experienced and compassionate team is there to help you achieve lifelong oral health and a stunning smile. To find out more about Southwest Dental Care, call them at 573 573- 634-4909 or visit southwestdentalcarejc.com to get the best smile in town you mustache to southwest dental care attention class of 2021 it's time to think about your future it's time for you to take action it's time to apply to state tech but you better hurry because space is filling up fast in fact more than 85 percent of our seats will be filled by march so don't delay and find out firsthand why State Tech is ranked the best college in the country for the second year in a row. And we are proud to be known as the employer's choice. Apply today at statetechmo.edu. New pitcher on the mound for the Renegades. It will be number 37, Shane Fontenot. Looking up his stats. He's a right-handed thrower. He's pitched in 11 games. He's pitched in 20 and, a, 20 and a third innings. He has 22 strikeouts, only eight walks. He has a 2.21 ERA. As we are in the top of the eighth inning, Legend still leading 2 0. Renegades left runner stranded in the last inning. And yet, another great play from the center fielder, Paschal. As Fontenot finishes his warm up pitches. And next up, we have extra hitter, Kevin Hagner. Extra hitter. I'm, especially a new term I've heard in baseball. Uh, we're, we're making it. We're, uh, we're starting a trend here. <laughs> First pitch from Fondo is going to be in, or excuse me, low for ball one. That's your assignment. Tomorrow's call up the MLB commissioner and say we got a new idea, extra hitters. 
Next pitch is swung on a miss for strike one. Yeah, I'll just call up Rob Manfred real quick. Yeah, you've got his number, don't you? Yeah, probably. Just got to dig through. 1-1 one, one pitch to Hagner is going to be taken for strike two. Speaking of the MLB, Cardinals are leading the Cubs right now 4-1. to one, And I couldn't be any more happier. Hagner's going to ground the ball right over the pitcher's head. Marte's going to field it, and he's going to have a late throw. A great play by Schumann as he keeps the ball in front of him. But it's going to be an infield single for Kevin Hagner. Yeah, Schumann lays down and gets the low throw, but Marte just really nothing he could do there. He had a hard time getting it as it was a slow roller, a big hop over Fontenot's head. Just tough play all the way around. It's batting six. We have Travis K, the first baseman. First pitch from Fontenot is going to be big cut and a miss for strike one. And like I was saying, Cardinals are winning 4-1. And the only thing that can make this night better would be a Renegades win. And they still have that chance as they're down only 2-0. Right now we have runner on first base. Next pitch to K is swung. I think it was fouled back. Yeah, that one off the inside part of the leg of Claro. Now it'll be strike two as he's down 0 2. Still 3 to 2. The uh, Joplin Outlaws leading the Sedalia Bombers at Sedalia's top of the seventh at 6 3. Corinne A's over the St. Joseph Mustangs. 0 2 pitch. He stays alive. Foul ball straight back. Now it's still making an 0 2 count. Keelholz comes out and gets it. I guess that's one of the extra duties of the Mink League Player of the Week is to retrieve those <laughs> foul balls. Next pitch is inside, and apparently it hit him. Yeah, it did. Uh, Barely it, clipped his pants, yeah, I think. Yeah, it got the pants, but it did ruffle the pants a hair. You couldn't hear anything, but umpire said it hit him. Next up, we have shortstop Bryce K, as he has runners on first and second. Fontenot is still looking for the first out of the inning. He's going to show bunt, and that's going to be bunted foul. So I'm making an 0-1 count on K, who is batting seventh tonight for the Legends. So Hagner's at second base. K is at first, and K is also batting. As he's going to rope one to left center field, center fielder Brady Voss on the run. He's going to make a great catch for out number one. Well, he showed his speed there, was able to get on the horse and get over and get that. If not, that goes to the Centurion Cares banner, and most likely will score a run. Next up, we have center fielder Ryan Paschel. Oh, this is Shekels. Should be Derek Shekels. Oh, right. You're right. He's a crowd favorite, but not at the moment because he's had some spectacular plays out. And that's why I thought it was Paschal because I heard some boos. Nope, this is Shekels or Shekels. I have Shekels, but I'll go on your word. So first two pitches to him are strikes. Make him down 0-2. Sfano has him down 0-2. Still runners on first and second with one out. Top of the eighth inning. Next pitch from Fano is going to high fly ball on the right field. See if Patton can come in in time. And the ball's going to drop. Burton's going to pick it up. He's going to throw to second base. And they're gonna, not going to get the force out at second base. That was a pretty close play. So the ball drops in for a base hit. Now it's bases are loaded for Parker Schneider, the third baseman. It's a tough play there as Burton was tried to uh, glove it, backhanded over his shoulder, just couldn't get it. Just a shallow hit ball in the right field. Yeah, ball went straight into no man's land. 
So now Parker Schneiders is up to bat. First pitch is a strike right down the middle. Good fastball from Fontenot. Next pitch is outside for ball one. We have Hagner at third base and K at second and K at first. Or actually we have Shackles at first, that's my bad. 1-1 one, one pitch to Schneiders is upstairs for ball two. So he is ahead in the count, two and one. Fondo looking to get two quick outs. Next pitch is fastball right down the middle for strike two. Legends leading two to nothing. So Schneiders is even in the count at two and two. Next pitch is little ground ball up the right in front of home plate. Clarell's going to tag the base or tag home plate for out number two. Good play by Al Corot as he prevents the run from scoring. A lot of close plays at the plate tonight. He's prevented some runs. I think he's going to be okay, but he got slid in there on that right ankle, right leg. I think he's okay, but he was being very ginger trying to step on the bag and not get rolled into. Yeah, that would not have been good. Next up, we have the number... 10 hitter and Josiah Imhoff or Imhoff. First pitch to him is a fastball right down the middle for strike one. Fano looking to get out of this inning as he still has bases loaded with only or with two outs. Looking to keep this a two nothing ball game. Next pitch away for ball one. Good by good play by Claro to keep the ball in front. Yeah, Fontenot was trying to work it down and outside, trying to get Imhoff to chase after one. Next pitch is big cut and miss for strike two. Fontenot will look back in. This is a two to nothing ball game here in favor of the Legends. That one fouled out over the first base dugout. So he stays alive, makes it a 1-2 count still. So 1-2 count, base is loaded, two outs. Next pitch is just low for ball two. Again, that same kind of idea. He's trying to get... I'm off to chase one low and a little outside. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Oh, that's exactly Not what anymore. He did. As he strikes him out, you can put a K next to his name. As Fonno leaves the bases loaded without scoring any runs for the Legends. So now we're going to head to the bottom of the eighth. Renegades are slowly running out of time to make this a close ball game. You are listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions for forward-thinking businesses. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, predictive dialer, outbound call notifications, cloud services, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. Your customers will have access to information they need quickly and accurately. Most importantly, this allows customers to interact with your business on their terms at times that are convenient for them. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421-5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com. Centurion Cares, innovative communication solutions. Ball game for 
are the legends. Who had blue shirts? As we have a substitution, as Joe Zink is going to be in for Andrew Patton at right field. As he swings at the first pitch for strike one. Second pitch to him is going to be inside, painted in the corner for strike two. O2 pitch to Zink as going to be swung on and missed for strike three. As he gets set down, one, two, three to start the inning. Next up, we have the first baseman, Dawson Schumann. Batting from the right side, wearing number 29. Looking to put a run on the board for the Renegades. The Siri are still being shut out. Next, first pitch to him is inside for ball one. On deck, we have center fielder Brady Voss. 1-0 pitch to, to Schumann is going to be laced out to left field. And it's going to get down for base hit. And it gets past the left fielder and McFeeders. Schumann's going to round his way from first. And he's going to make it to second base standing. And he's thinking about third base as the ball gets away from the cutoff man. But he's going to stay put at second. So Schumann gets a one-out double. To bring up Brady Voss. I really like Brady Voss's walk-up song. So runner on second base. First pitch to Voss is outside for ball one. So Voss is looking to get something going. Hopefully put a run on the board as he nearly gets hit by pitch number 14, but it did not hit him. It was pretty close to, though. We've seen a lot of those come pretty close. Yes, we have. That'll be a 2-0 count on Voss. Next pitch, he's going to lace it out the center field. And Paschal makes another great play, but Schumann's going to tag up from second base. He's running, and he's going to make his way to third base. Sliding. So Schumann was able to tag up on that fly ball to center field. As the legend center fielder has been very, very busy tonight. So batting six, we have left fielder Caden Deal. One of the last shots of this inning to put a run on the board as, as Schumann is just 90 feet away. The game winding down very quickly. Yeah, they are slowly running out of opportunities to score runs as he's going to rope the first pitch foul. He crushed that thing, but it's just foul. We've seen a lot of those tonight. Seen a lot of players just get early on the pitch and crush it, but none have stayed fair. Hey, good news. It's tied 3-3 three to three at Sedalia between the Bombers and the Outlaws. They just scored. Had a runner on second base, moved to third on a wild pitch. Another wild pitch scored at home, so they're tied 3-3. Three to three. Curveball up high to deal as, out, as that will be ball one. Another curveball to deal. It's up high. That's going to be ball two. So we have Schumann at third base. He had a one-out double tagged up on a fly out to center field. Renegades have two outs. Another pitch is high and inside for ball three to deal. St. Joseph Mustangs, they're trying to close the gap. They have done so at Clarinda. They're trailing the A six to five. Deal's going to rope a line into right field, and it's going to be right at the right fielder. Man, the Renegades could not hit the ball any harder tonight. They're just getting extremely unlucky. So no run scored again as they are down 2-0 as we head to the top of the ninth inning. 
You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Biblical Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment for more than 15 years. Located in the Jefferson City, Riverwalk Christian Academy offers kinder prep through sixth grade that prepares students to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students, with the student body comprised of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions, with kindergarten offering half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverwalk Christian Academy, call them at 573 634 3983. Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Uh I know an agent there. Welcome to Jamaica. We love it. it. (laughs) But we're thinking about Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I know a guy. You know an agent, too. It's Kathy Rush at Remax Jefferson City. Call her today at 573-761-3405. Same pitcher in for the Renegades. Shane Fontenot comes in for the ninth inning. He's set to face hitters 11, 12, and 13. I don't hear that very often. Yeah, I was about to say. Didn't think I'd hear that tonight. We have left fielder Blake McFeeders up to bat. Fondo steps off. First pitch to McFeeters is going to be down and in for ball one. Second pitch is hot, high, and swung on and missed. Got him crossed up a little bit there. Yeah, it was a high pitch to swing at. Not a normally good pitch to swing at. Next pitch is looked at for strike two. So one two pitch to McFeeters is looked at for strike three. And you can write a backwards K next to his name. Fano gets the inning started well. Next up, we have Stuck and Schneider. Right in the game, we got his name figured out. Yeah, it took us a while, but we did. So Fano has one out, top of the ninth inning. First pitch to Stuck and Schneider is a good breaking ball for strike one. Oh, one pitch to Stuckenschneider's <laughs> high and inside ball. He should not have swung at, but he did. So that puts him down 0-2. It's 0-2 pitch to Stuckenschneider. And just got a piece of it. Yeah, not much, but enough to stay alive. So he stays alive. Still has an 0-2 count with one out in the inning. Fondo looking to shut him down. 0-2 pitch is low and gets away from Claro for ball one. Winter Bax comes over and gets that ball. Bax the number 13 hitter. Things you see in the game of baseball. You are right. Next pitch is outside for ball two. So 2-2 two, two counts from Fontenot. Two stuck in Schneider. Next pitch is barely fouled off. Kind of hits off Claro. Tony, if we could reach through the fence, we'd be making a killing tonight. A big prize wheel would have our name all over it. Yes, it would. 
So he stays alive. Still a 2-2 count. One out. Top of the ninth inning. 2-2 delivery. He stays alive again. This will be pitch number eight coming up with this at bat. Schneider not wanting to go down easy. So he's even in the count. 2-2 pitch from Fontenot is just outside for ball three. So he goes from 0-2 in the count to, to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Got a 3-2-1. Three, three balls, two strikes, one out. Next pitch. He stays alive once again. This will be the tenth pitch here, the at-bat. These long at bats make you a little nervous. Yeah, especially if he gets away with this. So full count pitch is going to be ground ball to third base. Neuer's going to pick it up. He's going to throw it to first, and it gets a wild throw, and it goes into the dugouts. I think Denoyer rushed that throw a little bit. Kind of just sidearmed it and went way over the head of first baseman Dawson Schumann. So that long at bat ends up in a single and an E5. Yeah, single E5. Next up, we have Hunter Bax, the number 13 hitter for tonight's game. So first pitch from Fontenot. He looks at the runner at second base, stares at him for a while. Bax is going to show bunt. That was really close to the hands, but it foul straight back. Kewels is going to hustle to get that ball. Bax has a 0-1 count on him. Run on second base. One out. He's going to take a pretty ugly swing for her strike two. So Fondo had the last hitter at 0-2. See if he can put him away this time. His Bax chokes up on his bat. Next pitch, he's swung on and missed strike three. And you can write a K next to his name. That was after a 10-pitch at bat. Then it was three pitches and they out. We head back to the top of the order. Second baseman Cameron Morris steps up from the right side of the plate. So runner on second base, two outs, top of the ninth inning. Fondo looking to get out of the inning quickly. As first breaking ball is slides back in for strike one. What do you think the uh, drop on that was? Two and a half foot? I, I don't even know, but that was it a went, great pitch. It went from head to strike zone in a short succession. Next pitch is he takes a cut, and it's going to be strike two. <laughs> they look for approval from the second base umpire. He says he did go. So it is indeed strike two. Time is called. Fondo steps up to the mound. Has him down 0-2. Next pitch delivered is looked at for strike three. And you can write a backwards K next to his name. So Fondo gets out of that inning. As no runs were scored, we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Renegades looking to overcome this 2-0 lead that the Legends have. And you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here in the Show Me Sports Network. Haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time and running out of some of your favorite makeup, fragrances, or skincare products? No need to worry. Avon representative Michelle Cartier has got you covered. Michelle can consult with you on the newest line of products as well as get those that have become your must-haves. 
You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 from the comfort of your own home and have your order shipped directly to your front door. To see how Michelle can help you out, find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carti. Live beautifully with Avon. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie! game. Mastanelli has taken a 5-3 lead over the Outlaws. We are in the bottom of the ninth here in Jefferson City at historic Ernie Vivian Field. As new pitcher for the Legends it will be Kevin Hagner, a sidearm thrower, right-hand thrower. As Brenton Burton steps up to bat, he shows bunts, takes it away, and that's going to be ball one. Yeah, that was... I don't know how he could have thought about hitting that as Sidearm coming across the plate like that. Yeah, it looked to be off speed as well. Next pitch, foul straight back for strike one. <laughs> Burton will retrieve his own foul ball. <laughs> He's a team player. So now even the count of one and one. Renegades are down to their final three outs in order to keep this game alive. One one pitch to Burton. He takes his bat back as he tried bunting, but that's going to be ball two. Spurton wiggles his bat, gets ready for the 2-1 pitch, inside for ball three. We'll see if he can find his way on. Love to see a leadoff hitter get on, get something started for the Renegades. 3-1 pitch to Burton. It's outside for ball four. So Renegades finally have something going in the bottom of the ninth as Hagner walks his first batter he sees. Next up, we have designated hitter Hamilton Anderson up to the plate. And he is probably the right person you want to have right now. Is he... Line the base hit up the middle, his last at bat. He is currently second in the team in home runs. We'd love to see him tie for first right now. First pitch to him is outside for ball one. On deck, we have catcher Ali Claro. Sagner. Steps off the mound. Waits to get his pitch. Nods and gets his pitch. 1-0 pitch to Anderson. Right down the middle for strike one. Man, these bugs are they coming are out at night. Full force tonight. We've got the little machine that keeps the bugs away. <laughs> Next pitch to Anderson is down and low. Uh, Drew of Carter, two. Drew Mize and Carter Mize, their grandpa, listened to our broadcast a few weeks ago and brought a little gadget that produces a uh, thing that the bugs don't like. Ball inside as it nearly hits Anderson. Produces like a field that they don't like, and I forgot to bring it today. We haven't needed it a whole lot. But uh, tonight would have been a good night for it. Yeah, they are annoying tonight. 3-1 pitch to Anderson. He's going to foul it straight back. Decided to swing on 3-1. Catcher makes a nice barren to play as it bounced right back to him. That's, I think, right off the pole. So Hamilton now has a full count. No outs. One runner on first. And Ben Burton... His time is called. I think it was another headlight. And yeah, this uh, back umpire is on it with those headlights. He does not like them. Full count pitch is swung on a hit to left center field. He better not make that catch. He does not. The ball gets down. 
as Burns going to head his way to third base. Anderson's making his way to second base. Burns going to be waved around third. He's coming straight home. No throw as he's going to be saved. That's going to be first run of the ball game for the Renegades. Hamilton Anderson with a stand-up double as center field Paschal finally cannot catch the ball. He met one that he couldn't catch up to. And that probably felt good for Anderson as he hit a laser to him at one point that was caught. He finally gets it over his head. Yeah, Paschal has been an amazing center fielder. Broke through the wall out there even on one of them. He's been gold glove tonight. He did make it through the gate. It wasn't the wall that he went through, but... You know, he fixed it, ran into it a couple of batters later and did not fall through it the second time. So he's also apparently a handyman. Now we have number nine hitter, Alec Claro. First pitch to him is going to be taken inside for ball one. See if Claro can just get a base hit here and tie this game. one -oh pitch to him. Taken inside for strike one. So Anderson staying in on second. We now have a 2-1 ball game. 1-1 one -one pitch to Claro is swung on a miss. Foul ball straight back for strike two. So no outs. Claro has a 1-2 count on him. Hagner gets set. Delivers. Ball is away for strike two. Ball gets away from the catcher and Anderson's down at third base. Now all the Renegades need is a fly ball and be a tie game. Now the question would be, since it's a non-league game and it's just for fun, how many potential extra innings would you play? Not sure. I don't even know if you'd play one. Yeah, I wonder if it does just end the tie. I would make a decent case that it might. So even count, two and two to Claro. This ball's taken outside for ball three, making a full count. Claro does represent the winning run, the tying run, just a few feet away on third base. He just needs to get the ball and play. Full count pitch. He's gonna rope at the left field. And that's going to get down for a base hit, and he has tied this game. He's running from first. He's headed his way to second base, and he has a stand-up double. Ali Claro has tied the game at 2-2 two to two here in the bottom of the ninth inning. He got out in front of that pitch, and he just roped it to left field right down the line. Hagner is going to pull his, pull his own card here and... Exit the game. Hey, you know what? He looked good in three innings of work. Again, game tonight just for fun. Out here having a great night at the ballpark. Hey, good news from Sedalia. It's now eight to three. Oh, they wow. just played it three runs. It was a five to tied at three to three. Then they got ahead five to three. Just looked up and now it's a New pitcher in the ball game for the Legends. It's Gage Backs. Gage Backs. Yeah, so home run in Sedalia as Spencer Nevins goes yard and scores three runs. So good news in Sedalia and good news in Jeff City. We have a tie ball game here, and Sedalia is winning against the Vicious Outlaws. That is really the best case scenario for the Renegades as they're sitting tied with Joplin. Joplin taking a look at their schedule. They're playing tonight, of course. Tomorrow, they will be at Sedalia. Thursday, they will be at Sedalia. Friday, they'll be here. Saturday, they'll be here. So there's a chance that if the Bombers could win tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday night, and the Renegades win game one of the two-game homestead, win Friday's game. That would all but seal it. I'm not a mathematician. But that would all but seal a home playoff game 
for the Renegades, which is something that they have not had this season. This, uh, well, of course, this season, but home they haven't had a home playoff game in their history. Now off the bat, we have number 23, Jason Marte. Shortstop, who took over for Drew Mize. He's going to show bunt, and he's going to take that for strike one. I had a little bit of a feeling Renegades were to come back tonight. I think we've seen that before. We have. We still have no outs. As Baxter versus his second pitch inside in the dirt for ball one. Just the base hit will win it for the Renegades. Blake, I know you've experienced some walk-offs. I've never seen a Renegades walk-off so far. They're exciting to say the least. I would love to see one. Next pitch is down for ball two. On deck, we have third baseman Seth the Neuer. So 2-1 count on Jason Marte. He's going to swing on a bitch in the dirt. Now be 2-2 two two count. So even count 2-2 two two to Jason Marte. Next pitch is inside for ball three. Nearly hit him. Yeah, Marte was curling out of the way. So full count pitch on Jason Marte. And it's taken inside for ball four. So now we have runners on first and second. No outs for Seth DeNoyer. Let's see DeNoyer send us home with a walk-off winner here. He is a player that is capable of doing that. DeNoyer hitting a 182 clip coming into the game today. However, he was one for two and one for three in the last two games against the Prospects. Had two RBIs. First pitch from Bax is inside to Mize. Or excuse me, not Mize, to Neuer for ball one. So one ball, no strikes to DeNoyer. Second pitch on the way. In the dirt for ball two. Scoops away from the catcher, but he gets in just in time. Neuer just as batting gloves as I talked about the other night in the doubleheader with Des Moines. DeNoyer and... Mize, that's Carter Mize, both students of the game, spend a lot of time on the bus rides, watching their at-bats and their fielding and seeing how they can get better. 2-0 count to DeNoyer is inside for ball three. We spent a lot of miles traveling down the highway to and from games, and they're there critiquing their at-bats and seeing how they did and watching it a second, third, fourth, a tenth time trying to get better. 3-0 pitch to DeNoyer. He's taken inside for ball four. Bases are loaded for Joe Zink. Well, this definitely changes how you could win it. They could win by a base hit. They could win by a wild pitch. They could win by a walk. A lot can happen with no outs and bases loaded. They could win a lot of different ways. A sack fly would do it, too. First pitch to Zink is down in the dirt for ball one. And you'd hate for hate to see it for the Legends. Have the Renegades walk their way to a win. 1-0 pitch to Zink. Upstairs for strike one. That call might be a little high, but that's been consistent all night. 1-1 pitch to Joe Zink. Breaking ball. For strike two. Hey, right that was a pretty good pitch. Just fooled Zink. Huh? One, two, count to Zink. And it's going to hit him, and they're going to win the ball game. That one hurt. That one hurt. On a hit by pitch to Joe Zink, they're going to win the ball game. Zink will be okay, but that hurt. You could hear that he got on that, the microphone. Like right in the ribs, right in the chest area. So Renegades are going to walk it off on a hit-by-pitch. Well, 
Uh, you know, that's not one that I scripted up. No, it is not. As they all join right by the pitching mound. Hug Joe Zink. Zink, probably the shortest guy on the team. But it's some mighty things tonight as he wins the ball game for the Renegades. Blake, I got to say, I can't believe they won tonight. You know, that's why you got to stay for all nine innings. As it took them much of the game to get something doing, and they win it in walk-off fashion in the bottom of the ninth inning. A lot of fun at the ballpark tonight. As game non-league contest against the Jeff City Legends and... You know, some of these Legends players coming out of retirement and getting an opportunity to play under the stadium lights one more time. Big crowd made their way out to the game tonight, too. Yeah, everyone wanted to watch these two teams play in this non-league game. Well, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, it was just a slow game for the Renegades for the first, well, eight innings as they left a lot of men on base and just could not score runs. They got pretty unlucky with... Center fielder Ryan Paschal, who was just a gold glove out there until the ninth inning where a ball finally got over his head. And it scored the first run of the game. But overall, a good momentum win for the Renegades. And hopefully they can do this again tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow they'll have a non-league game. They'll be taking on the Kansas City Monarchs again. You might not be familiar with the moniker of the Monarchs, but they used to be the Kansas City T-Bones for many years in Kansas City. And then... They uh, had some, I don't know what you'd call it, team issues and some things. The team, I believe, was purchased by some new ownership new ownership group bottom, and they uh, were able to work out a new deal for their home stadium as well as some other things they needed to take care of, and they rebranded as the Kansas City Monarchs. So good opportunity tomorrow for the Renegades to play some players that are possibly headed up to the majors. Some of them coming up from the minor leagues as well, and some of them also might be uh, in the process of going through kind of the rehab from some injuries, but good players that know how to play baseball, so tomorrow night should be a lot of fun. Well, pregame about 6.40, 6.45, first pitch at 7 o'clock. As you can hear, our exclusive broadcast here on the Home for Renegades Baseball on the Renegades Radio Network, the Show Me Sports Network. Any uh, last words to say before we get off here? I do want to say thank you again to Blake for letting me do the play-by-play -play tonight. I had a lot of fun. My first time ever doing an entire game. I hope you all enjoyed listening. I know I had probably a few mistakes, but I like to say I'm pretty new getting used to this. But I had a lot of fun tonight. I can't wait to do it again some other day. Well, you did a great job, and uh, it's been a pleasure. For Grayson Smith, I'm Blake Gasway for the Show Me Sports Network. Until we talk to you tomorrow, so long and have a great evening.